to die forever. Your cross gave me freedom. Yes, Lord Jesus. Your stripes gave me healing. Yes, Lord Your cross gave me freedom. Your love gave perspective. Yes, yes, yes. Your word. Hey everyone, Christy and I, on behalf of the Body of Christ in America, we'd like to welcome you to the first ever National Communion Celebration. Uh, we are so expectant for today. The live stream is going to start very shortly, uh, but we've just simply gathered here in Independence Mall in Philadelphia uh, to put Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, at the center of everything we do. And so we just invite you to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, get the communion elements if you've not already and to join us for this historic gathering. Guys, we're so excited that you're here and we're so expectant for what the Lord is gonna do. So be ready and we're excited.
And I think now people just kind of associate the Northeast with being dry, with being rude, with being prideful, what have you. Um, which seems like ripe ground to me. <laughs> people here are just ready to be loved. And so I think it's time that we love them. That we have people here that just love well. And that's what we've really encountered with the pastors here and the churches. They're people that love deeply and and they're not concerned about building their church name or building up a name for themselves. They're concerned with building the kingdom in the name of Jesus. And so there's a lot of like, I guess you could call it cross-pollinization of churches. There's like people um, from different churches doing life together and and very similar to what we're used to um, But it's just been really beautiful to see In the city of brotherly love people ready to receive love and I think this is like a prototype of the Northeast I think we're gonna see a lot more of this in New York City in Boston and all of these other cities that we're familiar with um, I believe revival is going to hit these places and I think it's going to be a revival that we've never seen before. I think what what we've equated revival with in the past is kind of like these peaks of spirituality revolving around Jesus but I think this revival 
will be a, a steady, consistent incline with a solid foundation of people loving Jesus and loving one another.
outside the sea None would come close But you would let go What weren't bad then Will work again I know the blood is still Don't 
outside the sea None would come close But you wouldn't let go What worked back then Will work again I know the blood is still Um, and we are so aware of God's pleasure and his presence with us. And this could not happen without the Church of Philadelphia, these amazing men and their wives, their ministries. Um, we have summoned you today not to be spectators, but to stand in the gap on behalf of our nation. And you'll notice that we have set a table here, not a pulpit, uh, but a table uh, this is not any man's table. This is not my table. This is not the table of any church or ministry leader. This is the table of the Lord. And we've gathered on these grounds that are historic for our nation. We know that over 200 years ago, there was a group of men that signed a declaration that, that shaped this nation. I mean, we believe that today, the body of Christ, by the delegated authority through this meal can do something that will shift the course and the direction of our nation. There is an altar here in this place. Many would regard this as the womb or the birthplace of this nation. And so we very intentionally have set the table of the Lord, Jesus Christ, his broken body, his shed blood at the center of it all. And we're here today to remember his sacrifice to renew covenant with our king, to repent for where we've gone off as a nation. But we believe that God has entrusted to us authority by the Holy Spirit, not just to receive this for ourselves, but to apply it to our nation. And we believe that he's inviting us, according to John 20, 23, he says, anyone who sins you forgive shall be forgiven, but anyone who sins you withhold shall be withheld. And we believe that today our Father is asking us through this meal to declare forgiveness over our nation. Most of you know that we are gathered right outside the Liberty Bell. Many of these people are in line waiting for the Liberty Bell. For those of you, this is your first time. I want you to know that there is an inscription upon it uh, from the Bible, and this historic artifact for our nation that would be rung to gather people to, to Congress to hear official meetings. And so we have rung the bell of liberty, but on that bell there is a scripture that refers to a principle called Jubilee. And so we're here to announce Jubilee. And I've, I've invited my friend, Pastor Jamie Centeno, local Philadelphia pastor. He's going to read and declare uh, this to us today. Amen. I'm so glad to be here before this table with you all. And I remember the Liberty Bell when it was just on the street and not in that building. I remember we would just casually pass by it and didn't see it as a, a big thing. And yet now seeing the, the depth of what God has said through this bell, and now I want to read that to you. On the Liberty Bell is proclaiming liberty throughout all the land unto all of the inhabitants thereof found in Leviticus, found in the word of God. And this was the heart that our nation started with. 
And so I just want to take a moment. Can we just lift our hands in this place and just begin to sense the Father's joy and peace in this place as we gather before his table, as we acknowledge him as the one who is desiring liberty to the inhabitants, to the people that he created and made. Father God, I declare that father's hearts will turn to their children and their children to their father, that that will bring a liberty into families and into lives. May you open up the hearts of fathers that they will look to celebrate and acknowledge the children that need to hear their voice and see their presence. God, turn the hearts, liberate them, Lord God, and may the children turn their hearts to the fathers again. May there be this generational blessing that comes upon our land, Father God, as we proclaim what Malachi said in, in Malachi when he spoke to the people to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the father. God, I release righteousness and I declare righteousness upon leadership and upon people that they will be in right standing with you. We declare it in Jesus' name that it will bring solutions and it will bring societal peace as the righteous rise up. And I declare, Father God, for Christ following creative influencers to arise and come forth that they will bring heaven's solution to problems, that they'll bring heaven's solutions to education and to government and to business and to all the areas, Lord God, in our society, which we need to hear from heaven. May you rise them up. We declare it that this crossover, this coming to the Lord's table is going to bring this about in the body and to our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So many of you know that, that on this ground, in this building behind me, the Declaration of Independence was signed. Um, but I didn't realize this as I was in prayer, the Lord, and in, in studying this out, that declaration that was signed still had to be lived out. There was still a war to be fought for that, that independence that was declared. And I believe that today God is asking us to make declarations that will shape the future of our nation. It doesn't take a prophet to realize that sin is running rampant in our nation. At the root of every cause, political, social, moral, financial, at the very root is the fact that sin is in the heart of mankind. And the only remedy that we have, church, America, for sin is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. There is one remedy for the racial issues, for the financial issues, the political chaos and confusion. It is this meal, it is this table, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that spirit of independence that prevailed in 1776, that at once was, was used to, to bring this nation into freedom, it has soured. That spirit of independence, it has soured, it has turned on us, and it has, I believe, cultivated a spirit in this hour that has said, God, we don't need you, we don't need one another, we can do this on our own. Any of you who have been living under this spirit of independence that I can do this on my own, you realize that life of independence apart from God is misery. Yeah. It's torture. Because there's only freedom found in one name, and his name is Jesus. And so we want to do some work today before we enter into the celebration that is the eternal jubilee of Jesus Christ. We want to stand before God and we want to repent for this spirit of independence. And we want to make a declaration on this ground of dependence. Because Jesus Christ in John 5 said this, he says, I can do nothing on my own. See, Jesus himself was fully dependent upon the Father to see the glory of God fill the earth. How much more his body today? And so I'm gonna ask you to stand to your feet. As we make this declaration, I'm gonna invite Pastor Terry, who's a father in this city, to come, and he's gonna pray and minister this declaration of dependence with us. Thank you, Peter. You know, throughout church history, biblical history, in relationship between God and his people, there have always been those moments where we have had to repent. We've had to turn back to God. Whether it was Moses coming down from the mountain and the, the presence of the Lord was so bright over his face that the people needed a veil. 
Paul, when he's talking to the Corinthian church, he says, to this day, that veil is still there. But whenever they would turn to the Lord, the veil would be lifted. Over and over, you hear about it and you read about it and you see it. Even with David having to turn to God. In Isaiah chapter 6, he says, when I got rid of the distractions, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And so today we're going to take some time and repent. Repentance meaning turning. And it happens first individually and then corporately in the body of Christ. And we want to experience that today. And in this season, may repentance be the sustained rhythm of the church. May we always be turning to him. Not just for today on this mall, but for all time until Jesus comes. May the church constantly follow the leadership of Jesus who said this, he said, I only say what I hear the Father say. And I only do what I see the Father do. But I will tell you, repentance is a glorious thing. It's joyous. David, in his repentant time in Psalm 51, he says, restore to me the joy of my salvation that comes through repentance. Repentance for us says this, God of heaven, God of earth, we invite you back into every area of our lives. We want to be refreshed with you. Listen to this passage of scripture out of the book of Acts chapter 3. He says, so repent, change your mind and your purpose. Turn around. And return to God that your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped clean. That times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. And so this is wonderful. This is beautiful. This is glorious to be fresh and refreshed by him, to be filled by him, overflowing with his presence. But I will tell you, this is not the kind of sorrow that brings hopelessness. When we have sorrow for getting away from God and moving independently of him, that sorrow... It's not filled with hopelessness. It's not the kind of sorrow that has deep shame where you can't find redemption and restoration in God. But on the contrary, this sorrow, this godly sorrow leads to a pure and sincere turning to God and God's way. Everybody say out loud, God... And God's way. The results of this turning is his refreshing, his hope, his confident expectation of his goodness coming, his peace and his direction. Here's a conversation that David had with God. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts and see if there is any wicked and hurtful any shameful way in me and lead me in the way and in the path everlasting. And so now, before God and under an open heaven, his open heaven, let us individually do business with God. The church, those of you watching on live stream, those of you that are present, the church, let us now, the body of Christ, individually, let's do business with God. 
we want to ask God by the power of the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. So right now where you are, find your posture where you get in touch and in tune with God. Find that place. And just for a moment, we want to do business with God. Asking him to search every part of us. I will give you a moment for this now. Let us repent before the Lord. Go just a little further. Go a little further. Go a little further. Open up the doors of your heart for the Holy Spirit to come in. Invite him in. We turn to you, Father God. We turn to you. We turn to you. We give you our motives, our purity. We give you our bodies. We give you our choices. We turn to you. Move in every area of our lives. And as your church... We repent. We return to you as the supreme and as the sovereign ruler of our lives. We turn to you as the one true God and Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives. As your church and as your body, Lord Jesus, we are sorry. Father God, we ask for forgiveness for living lives independent from you. Please forgive us and cleanse us with the still active blood of Jesus Christ. And now everyone stand to your feet and hold your hand up high. Everyone stand to your feet. We are about to make a declaration. And I would love for you to repeat after me. Today, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, We declare declare our total dependence on you, Father God. We are dependent on you, King Jesus. We are dependent on you, Holy Spirit. Father God, we are dependent on your holy perspective. Found in your holy scriptures. We are totally dependent on your holy name, Jesus, and the model of the love of God that flows through your life. We ask you to help us to live lives individually and collectively as representatives of your church. We are committed to living lives that reflect your kingdom culture coming here and your will being done here in our cities in our nation and in our world may your will be done and your kingdom come now on earth just as it is in heaven In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, I give God a roar.
I prayed a prayer in 1999. How can I be a part of turning America back to God? God's led me on an amazing journey. But I feel this journey that we're on right now of communion in the blood of Jesus could be the only hope for America. We dreamed dreams for 20 years that there's coming something called the great communion revival. I'd like to declare today, it begins at the root of covenant of this nation, the seed of the nation, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the seed of the Constitution. Two covenants founded right here. Today is a day of covenant renewal. It doesn't take many. Gather to me my consecrated ones who have made a covenant by sacrifice, and I will answer them. Today, I believe there's a great shift taking place. In the 90s, I went to preach at a group of young people. I didn't know who they were. But as they were worshiping before I preached, the Lord spoke to me and he said, change your message and tell them I'm going to show mercy to the youth of America because they're the great, 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 great grandchildren of Jonathan Edwards, the father of the first great awakening that prepared the way for the Constitution. It was revival that prepared the way for this nation. And he spoke to me and he said, I'm gonna show mercy to the youth of America because just like David showed mercy to Mephibosheth, a broken generation because of his covenant with Jonathan, so too I'm gonna show mercy to the youth of America because of my covenant with Jonathan Edwards. That first great awakening saved America. Right before I got up to preach, a kid walked up to me. I didn't know who he was. And he said, Mr. Engel. I said, yes. Guess what? He said, what? He said, I just found out this week that I'm the great, 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 great grandson of Jonathan Edwards. There's hope for America. And the blood of Jesus is our only hope. I believe today there's going to be a removal of betrayal and accusation. We are a better blood people, not a brethren accuser people. Today, we forgive everyone that's betrayed us because when, when Jesus went to the cross, he gave communion to 12 guys that would all be shredded. We're gonna forgive everyone that's ever wounded. God's gonna break off woundedness from because of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe today, it's a day of great breakthrough in the spirit. When they had a solemn assembly in Israel, Samuel, when the Philistines were attacking them, all he did was lift up the suckling lamb and the Lord thundered against it. Today, we're gonna lift up the body and blood of Jesus and we're declaring from this root that God is gonna thunder against principalities and powers and loose something for this nation. It's Jubilee. But the real Jubilee is what Jesus said. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news. The afflicted bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the year of the favor of the Lord. Could this release the great harvest? Lift your hands. God, loose the jubilee of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit. Save the afflicted today. Deliver us and shift this nation in the name of Jesus. Give a shout to God.
looked like before the blood was applied to it. Lord Jesus, thank you for taking my heart of stone and giving me a heart of flesh to worship you. Lord, thank you for taking my heart that was full of shame and insecurity and fear and giving me one that was totally free. Thank you, Jesus. I give all glory to your name. Just remember, remember where your own heart was before his blood came and washed you clean. Sing that again. Glory to his name. Only he could do it. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart. Was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Sing it again. Glory to His name. 
anything for acceptance. Let me tell you, it's only by his blood. It's never been about deserving or earning. It's a gift that's freely given. Let me tell you, it's only by his blood. Does anybody want to be holy or righteous? Purified and spotless, let me tell you, it's only by the blood. Does anybody want to be worthy, forgiven, justified, really living? Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. It's never been, it's never been about performance, perfection. Striving for acceptance, let me tell you, it's only by the blood. It's never been about deserving or earning. It's a gift that's freely given. Let me tell you something, it's only by his blood. Does anybody want to be holy or righteous?
savior of America. He is the 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 savior. There was a moment when the sky lit up. A flash of light breaking through. When all was lost, he crossed eternity. The king of life was on the move for in a dark cold tomb. Savior, the Savior.
savior of America, the king over America. You are 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 the king. All hail the king, king, king of kings. All hail the king of kings. Sing this. All hail the King of Kings. 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 All hail the King. as you suppose. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon. We've tasted of a love. We've tasted of a love so sweet and so wonderful that we'll never be the same. We, the redeemed of God, are here today celebrating in the love of God because this cup is the cup that we drink of. And so I say again, these people are not drunk as you suppose. In just a moment, we are going to receive Jesus because he is the bread of life and this is the cup of the new covenant that is in his blood. But before we receive Jesus today, I want to speak to those of you who have gathered, who, who may have just stumbled upon this gathering. And I want to declare to you why we have gathered here. And I want to invite you to the Lord's table. For the last 20 minutes, we've been singing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been declaring that his broken body and his shed blood is his great love for mankind. And I don't know what you've heard about Jesus, about Christianity, but I'm here to tell you that he loves you. Regardless of your political or sexual orientation, Jesus Christ loves you. 
Jesus Christ loves you. And out of his great love for you, 2,000 years ago, he handled an issue that we humans could not handle on our own. And that issue was a disease in the heart of man that blinded us to the love of God. It's a disease that made us incapable of perceiving his great love. This is what sin does to the human heart. It blinds us to the love of God. It blinds us. God is not sitting in the sky nitpicking your behavior. He's grieved at sin, ravaging people created in the image of God. Our Father was grieved at sin because of his great love for humanity. And I want to declare to you today, those of you in line, those of you walking, those of you here that have gathered, Jesus loves you. And he desires union with you. He wants you to be close to him. He wants you so close that you would be in his family. And I want to tell you this afternoon, it's not complicated to get right with God. There's not a big list of things to do. All you have to do is come to his table. This is a meal prepared for you by Jesus himself. And all he wants to do is he wants to feed you his broken body. He wants you to taste of his brokenness, to take away your brokenness. See, Jesus was broken so that we didn't have to be. Jesus shed his blood for our sins so that we could be reconciled with our Father. And I want to declare to you today that God himself is inviting you to his table. And if you've come and if you've gathered, you can hear the sound of my voice. I want to invite you from the Father, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God today. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. It's this covenant table that makes you a son or a daughter of God. And I believe if God himself were standing on this platform, on this ground, I believe that he would present his son to you. On one knee, he would bend down on one knee in humility and he would look at you and he would say, will you marry me? Will you marry me? This is the heart of God. This is Christianity at its core. It's the love of God for people. And he says, will you marry me? This is Christianity. This is the very heart and the humility of our King. Everyone's trying to be powerful, but our King is humble. Our King is humble and he's meek and he's lowly. And he took everything, everything that was offensive Everything that we were never made for, he took it upon himself. He did it all. He did it all. He paid the highest price. He shed his own blood to bring you back into his family. And so if you're here today and you want to make covenant with God, you say, today is my day. I want to respond to God's invitation. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is asking you today, will you marry me? And if that's you, I want to ask you to lift up both hands in the air. You say, I want to make covenant with God. I'm going to come to his table, and I'm going to make covenant. This is for those of you, and you're you're renewing. You've never made covenant with God. You say, I want to make covenant today. Lift your hands. Two hands in the air. Two hands in the air. Two hands in the air. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want you to come. If that's you, two hands in the air. This is your time. If you're in line in the Liberty Bell, you can come. You're welcome. Anyone is welcome to the Lord's table. I want you to come to the front. Come on. If you lifted your hands, just make room for the people. Yeah, just come, 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 come. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Come on, who else? Come, come, come to his table.
Come on, there's room for you. There's room for you at the Father's table. Come. There's plenty of room. Come. If you wish you would come, come to Jesus. Come, come, come. You're going to have a few minutes to continue to come. I'm going to invite my wife, Christy, Michael, and Larissa to come. We're going to partake of the Lord's table this afternoon. Pulpits have preachers, but tables have mothers and fathers. And I believe with all my heart that right now, in this hour, God is, is raising up tables across America, across the nations of the earth, with the simple, broken body and shed blood of Jesus Christ, that the communion revival is about family. It's about mothers and fathers. And my wife is here, and our dear friends, Michael and Larissa, are here, and we're going to receive communion together. We're going to lift up the broken body of Jesus, not only over our nation, but for those of you in this place who need ministry from this table. We're going to do two things together. We're going to do the bread first and then the blood. And so those of you watching online, we welcome you to join us. We've got people watching all over the nation joining us this afternoon. As I was praying for this gathering and just listening to the heart of God, I could feel God's heart for every aspect of division that exists among us. It grieves the heart of God. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 17, it says that we who are many are one because we all partake of the one bread. You see, I want to just say this. There's nothing that can unify the body of Christ except his broken body. See, he himself was torn to bring us together. It says in Ephesians 2 that, that in his body, the, the dividing wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile, it was torn down in his flesh. And I want to just declare, listen to me, I want to declare that the broken body of Jesus is sufficient for every divide. Every racial disparity, every denominationalism, Catholic, Protestant, it's sufficient. But church, listen to me. We have to humble ourselves. We have to acknowledge that our unity is found in his broken body, that it transcends our denominations, it transcends the color of our skin, it transcends everything about us. What makes us one is that we're all partakers of his grace. And so as I break the body this afternoon, I'm declaring as a prophetic act over our nation that everything that has divided us between Republican and Democrat and black and white and all the issues that are staring us at the face. I'm holding up this bread in this place before this house and I'm declaring it's sufficient. And I believe I'm asking you to join me in faith as a royal priesthood that as we break this body this afternoon, remembering that Jesus Christ was violently torn apart out of his great love for us, that we would humble ourselves, church. We would humble ourselves, church before our King, before our Lord, before our Master. Can you join me in faith as I lift this, the Lamb of God, the bread of life, and before you take it, before you actually partake of it, Christy's gonna minister to you. So this will be the first aspect of this, and I'm gonna break this in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that on the night that you were betrayed, you broke your body and you said, this is 
my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And this afternoon, we remember you, Jesus. You are no longer dead, but you're alive. You're alive. And we celebrate you, sufficient Lamb of God, Jehovah Jireh. You have provided a lamb for us in yourself. And we hold up your broken body over every broken place in our nation. In Jesus' name. want you to take the bread and I want you to look at it. <clears throat> Peter just shared from the gospels when Jesus was sitting with his disciples at the table and he was staring at his betrayer and he says, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And I just feel that there are many here and you've been betrayed at some level. I feel that there are those here who might feel like I sense in my spirit like you were never meant to be born. And I just feel that, that the bread of Jesus, the body of Jesus was broken for sin. It was broken for the part of you that says, I could never please God. When we invite you to the table, we're saying you're, co you're coming because you can't. Apart from him, you can do nothing. And so if you're very familiar with the, with the feeling inside of you that says, I can't, I never could. If you're really, really familiar with rejection, I just wanna say that you're welcome because his body was broken for rejection. His body was broken for betrayal. His body was broken so that you could be whole. And I just wanna say that his body was broken for healing it says that by his wounds, we are healed. And so when we look at the bread, it's Jesus and he's giving himself to us. He's saying, you never could do it on your own. So I'm giving you myself. His body was broken so that you can be whole. So those of you that are down here and you're saying, I need to be whole. Jesus is saying, this is my body broken for you. This is my body broken for you. Those of you that are marked with addiction or sin or anger, whatever it is, he's saying, this is my body broken for you. You never could do it, so I did it for you. And so Jesus, we just say thank you for your body that was broken. Jesus, we just say thank you for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. Thank you, Jesus, that you bridged the gap for us. And so I just announce and I declare your broken body that was sufficient for every sin and every sickness. I declare your broken body over disease. I declare your broken body over shame. I declare your broken body over addiction. I declare your broken body over self-hatred. And Lord, I just say thank you for coming all the way. Thank you, Lord, when we betrayed you, you came for us. And so Jesus, we just say thank you. And we receive your body that was broken for us. Receive the body of Christ. says that you who were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And I don't know about you, but I'm just remembering when I was far off. And this meal is a meal of thanksgiving. And so I want you to just, those of you who have been brought near and you know it, you know when you were far and you know when you've been brought near, I want you to just close your eyes and look at Jesus and tell him thank you. I was so far and you brought me near by your blood. You had to die to bring me near. 
always wanted a man to die for me, and you did, Jesus. When I hated you, and when I was dead. The Bible says that when we were dead, God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, made us alive. And I want to declare over your heart today, for those of you at home, don't forget God is a God who is rich in mercy. This is who he is. This blood is who he is. He is rich in mercy. And his great love with which he loved us is still speaking. I love you. I love you. Come close. Come close. I love you. And I just want to tell you, everyone, at the sound of my voice, you are as close to God as you want to be today because he has removed every barrier to closeness with the lover of your soul and the creator of the universe. (laughs) He's removed every barrier. And his great love was not just for the day that you were baptized or that you were confirmed or that you said yes. His great love is for every day that you wake up and he loves you like no human could ever love you except the one with holes in his hands, holes in his feet and a wound in his side. It's an everlasting love. It's the love that you were made for. So just look at him one more time. Say, thank you, Jesus, for bringing me close. I want to be closer than I've ever been. Thank you, Jesus. In Leviticus 17, verse 3, it says that the life of a being is found in the blood. And I want you to look at that cup and look at the the wine inside of it. In Exodus 12, the Lord told Moses to tell the Israelites to take one lamb per family and to kill the lamb and to drain the blood of that lamb and put it in a basin. And then the fathers were to take hyssop and they were to apply it to the doorposts of their home. And in Exodus 12, the Lord says this, this is a really important part of the Passover story. The Lord says this, he says, when I see the blood, when I see the blood that you've applied, I will pass over. And truth be known, it doesn't matter what anyone on this field thinks about what's in the cup. The only thing that matters is what the Father sees when he looks at this cup because the Father sees the shed blood of his Son. Now the just, we walk by faith and so our faith is in what the Father sees you holding. So this cup, it's a reference point for our faith. John the Baptist came as a forerunner. He came to prepare the way of the Lord. And when he saw Jesus, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And one of the things I want to put our faith in as we take this blood is as forerunners in our nation, we're putting our faith in what the Father sees when he looks at this cup. Our hope isn't in a political party. Our hope isn't in a politician or even a a, an event like this, our hope is in what we're holding, that the blood of Jesus applied to our nation prepares the way of the Lord for a coming move, which is gonna be an outpouring of his spirit where we see what the Father sees when he looks at what we're holding. And so we're at one of the gates in our nation. This is a gate to our nation. So our nation was birthed. It's where a declaration was made. And I want us, as his people, to apply the blood to the gate of our nation. To apply the blood and say, Lord, may the gates open up once again. 
And may the King of glory come into this nation. The King who's strong and mighty in battle. And that he would arise and he would shine his glory. And he would have mercy on this nation once again. A nation that's drifted far, but it's being brought back near by the blood of Jesus. By a revelation of the blood. By a revelation of what we're holding. And it's the life of God's own son. Shed for you, shed for me, and shed for our nation. For there's no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. Beloved, this is, this is the atonement for us as individuals, but it's also atonement for every man, for every woman in our nation. And I believe it's the hope for the coming move of God. So would you take, would you take two minutes and when you get with uh, two, three other people, and I want you to plead the blood over two things. One, plead it over your state, and then let's plead it over our nation. Just take two minutes and do it. Just gather with them and apply the blood. Say, Lord, your blood speaks. Lord, your blood is powerful. Lord, we apply it today. Over the doorposts of our nation, over the gates of our nation, we apply your son's blood. Over Philadelphia, we apply your son's blood. Over Independence Hall, we apply your son's blood. Your blood speaks, Lord. Come on, priests of God. The table that you've made in the presence of our enemies, Lord. Take another 60 seconds. just hold your cup up and before we drink the blood of the covenant we want to pray for Philadelphia Lord we pray for this city Lord we pray for the city of brotherly love and we pray Lord that Philadelphia would once again be a gate to our nation and that Jesus you would move powerfully in this city Lord move in the church in Philadelphia Lord, the city of brotherly love, pour out your spirit, Lord, upon this city and upon this region. Lord, you've done it before, do it again. Lord, may the Whitfields emerge. Lord, would the evangelists come forth, God. God, we declare that a move is coming, centered around the table, that you've prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So, Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you for your shed blood. We receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the blood of Jesus. As we praying for this gathering, I felt impressed upon the Lord to make sure that we named it the National Communion Celebration. 
that the table of the Lord is a, it's a time of great rejoicing. I know we've done some repentance today, but we have confidence that God has heard us because of the blood, amen? We, we actually believe that we're crossing over as a nation today into a realm of joy, into a realm where salvation spreads to the highways and the byways. That God from this place, not just in Philadelphia, but those watching on the live stream all around the globe, that God is raising up ministers of reconciliation who will not count men's trespasses against them. God making his appeal through them be reconciled to God. I believe that tables are going to pop up all over America in the fields of America. That the fields are white for harvest. That we're going to see large tables, mile-long tables, and that denominational strongholds are going to bow. Pastors and leaders are going to come from around the world. And they're going to come to tables like this, in places like this, to repent to the Lord, but to find rejoicing again, to find joy again. And so I'm going to invite Lou Engel up here. God spoke to us a year ago. And he gave us a dream that he and I would be pleading the blood of Jesus over America. And we believe that this is one of those moments of jubilee, of great rejoicing. And so we're going to declare, I want, you, I want us to understand something just for a minute. In John chapter 20, 22, when Jesus rose from the dead, he walks into a room with his disciples and he breathes on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And then he gives them this instructions. He says, anyone who sins you forgive shall be forgiven. Yet anyone who sins you withhold shall be withheld. What was he doing? I believe he was commissioning ministers of reconciliation with the Holy Spirit to apply this blood. And you say, what about, what about forgiveness? They didn't ask for forgiveness. It's just like Jesus on the cross. Before anyone said, I'm sorry, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I believe, church, God is raising up. He's raising up a remnant. He's raising up sons and daughters who will look at the darkness, who will look at the sin in our nation prior to them acknowledging their fault, and they'll look at them with love in their eyes, and they'll say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Pour out your spirit on them. Pour out your love on them. And so this moment, I'm going to ask you to stand. And Lou and I are going to lead you in a time of, of intercession together. Those watching online, gathering in your homes, this is now time as a priesthood to stand in the gap on behalf of our nation. And I want you to know that your voice matters. He said, with the Holy Spirit, anyone who sends you forgive, I'll forgive. God has given you authority by the Holy Spirit to apply his blood. And we've gathered in his name in this place to do that. And then after that, we are going to release what the Bible calls a halal praise. A halal praise is to boast and to rave madly, spin around, dance about like lunatics before the Lord. We're gonna release a shout until we can't shout anymore. Do you know why? Because Jesus is worthy. And we're gonna celebrate the finished work of the cross being applied to our nation. As I was down here, I remember last year doing 40 days of communion and we had all of our team reading Peter Lewis's book called Keep the Blood Warm. And we were gonna do it for 30 days, Peter Lewis's book and apply the blood. At the end of that meeting, one of our gals came up to us and said, my name is Stephanie Lou. Peter Lewis, my name is Stephanie Lou. I haven't heard of Peter Lewis, but last night I had a dream that my brother Peter Lou was applying the blood. And the Lord spoke to me saying, today is that day. It has been fulfilled today to apply the blood. I want fathers to lift their hands right now all across this place. I want you to apply the blood to the doorposts of your own family. Just lift your voices. Just begin. Lord, we right now we apply the blood to our families and to our children. Today we declare they are set apart 
from the judgment of Egypt. Today we declare they are freed from their slavery. Come on, say with me, brother. They are freed by the blood. They are freed by the blood. Right now we loose our kids. Those in rebellion, we call them forth by the blood of Jesus and we apply the blood and we apply the blood of Jesus. to the racial guilt of our nation right now. I feel like I just need to do this. We received a dream as we've been praying for this great communion revival. And there was a place of great betrayal on an interactive map. And in this place where the betrayal had taken place, people started taking communion and they were receiving diplomas that said, BB, the better blood. The better blood, people. And there was another communion service at that place of betrayal. And that, play, that communion service was a toxic brew of bitterness, racial division, anger, and accusation. And they were receiving diplomas but they were receiving the BA diplomas, the brethren accusers. But the BB people had authority over the BB, BA. I don't know how we're gonna heal our races, but the Bible says the accuser of the brethren is thrown down by the blood. Right now in the name of Jesus, we declare that the blood throws down the accuser of the brethren. Declare we are losing the better blood. Oh, People better blood across the, the church, we declare we down. see the accuser, the accuser of the brethren falling from heaven. The and a great shout in heaven now has come the salvation of God. We declare the victory of the blood over the divisions of race. Do a miracle today. We declare a miracle, we declare a miracle, a miracle of love. We save the love. black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American. Come to the table. Come to the table. Come, Come to, to the, the table. table. have fallen for the blood drowns out the accusers the blood drowns out the accusers the accusers have fallen it's time to come to the table to the table all you nations yeah lord we just declare you said as often as we do this we proclaim the lord's death until he comes and we declare, Jesus, that you, through your death, you destroyed the one who had the power of death, that is the devil. And we declare today that through your death, that Satan himself has been cast down. Lord, that every stronghold, every curse of death, Lord, we thank you yes. that the people of God, through your covenant, through your name, have been brought into victory. Lord, I declare everything that has stolen our joy, God, I thank you that there will no more be joyless Christianity on the earth, God. That you will baptize us into the joy of the Father. I thank you, God, for good news of great joy filling the earth, God. That once again, you would put inside the heart and the mouth of the body of Christ good news of great joy. Good news, good news of, great of great joy. joy. Celebrating good news of great the name joy. of God. It's time to Lift celebrate. up a shout. It's time, it's time to, to celebrate. celebrate. Come it's on, time to celebrate. lift up a shout. It's time to Let's celebrate. Go. Let's praise it's it. It's time to celebrate. 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 
40 days of communion, I was led by the Spirit to look up and watch nuclear bomb tests, atomic bomb tests. I didn't know why, but I just looked at bomb after bomb and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And he said, you think these bombs are incredible? When I went to the cross, when I said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they do. When I said, it is finished, I dropped the bomb far greater than any finished. man's bomb. It shifted principalities and powers. And it, it dislodged demonic powers. It ripped the veil. Today, we're going to lose forgiveness. The same word that Jesus spoke, he began to speak to me that when the church gets a revelation of the power of corporate communion, we begin to reenact the same power that he loosed when he went to the cross. Oh, brothers and sisters, this is the moment to loose the bomb. To lose the bomb of heaven. Father, forgive me. We're going to make this declaration as one, and I'm asking you in this place to just begin to think of those areas of sin and brokenness that grieve your heart. It's that place of compassion is where you have authority in the spirit. It could be sexual brokenness, drug addiction, in the political chaos arena, whatever the case may be. I want you to just imagine right now that God has set you in this place. Those of you watching online in your churches, at your table, over your state, over your region, over your neighborhood, I want you to, to bring to mind the sin, the brokenness, and the depravity. See, there's no greater sin and injustice than killing the Lamb of God. And if Christ himself can model forgiveness, we, his body, can do the same. And so when we make this declaration, I'm going to ask you to make it with me. We're going to say with our lips, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I'm going to ask you to join in one voice, one body of Christ across America, across the nations. We are going to make this declaration. And we believe with all our heart that there is going to be a bomb in the spirit an awakening, a veil torn, that those who've been wandering around in darkness will come to the knowledge of Christ through this declaration, that the prayers that have been prayed, the Mary Campbells that have been praying for 20, 30 years, we believe that their prayers are gonna be poured out from this day in the coming months and years. So just take a moment and after we declare this forgiveness, I want us to praise and I want us to shout as if God himself is going to answer that prayer now, as if God himself is going to split the sky and pour out his mercy. I want us to shout as if he's going to do it. And so just lift your hands, close your eyes and see Jesus, see Jesus hanging on that cross. And today, Jesus, we speak what your blood is speaking, a better word than the blood of Abel that's crying out for justice. And so join me right now. We declare, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do.
Lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. God bless America. God bless America. We're singing, God bless America. We're praying, God bless America. We're asking as one America. God bless America. God bless America. The sons and daughters ask, God bless America. The sons and daughters ask, God bless America. God bless America. It's time to celebrate. God bless America. It's time to celebrate. God bless America. It's time to celebrate. Dependence Day. Dependence Day. Dependence Day. Dependence Day. Dependence Day. It's Dependence Day. We depend on God bless America. It's Dependence Day. Dependence Day.
good he's so good he's so good he's so faithful he's so faithful he's so good can we just lift up our hands to the father can we honor the father can we honor the father can we honor the father this afternoon can we honor the father the son and the holy spirit right now worthy Thank you for your faithfulness. None like you. None like you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, you give us, God. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, to be here, Lord, in your presence, God, representing, Lord, all the new covenant, God, offering the same forgiveness we received, God. And we offer that forgiveness, Lord, to our neighborhoods, God. We offer that forgiveness to our communities, God. We offer it to the cities, God, that we come from, God. We offer it, Lord, to regions, Lord, and the states, Lord, and, and the nation, God. And above, Lord, oh God, we just honor you. We thank you, God, because we get to do this, God. Thank you, thank you, thankful, thankful, thankful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful for your goodness, God. Your grace, Lord, is sufficient. Your truth, Lord, sets us free, God. And we stand here, Lord, knowing, God, that we are filled, Lord, with your love and power, God. So help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be brave, God. To be brave, God, and lift up the name of Jesus everywhere that we go. We honor you, we thank you, and we pray all of this, all of it, in the most powerful name, the name that matters most, the name of Jesus. So this session, we bless you all. We bless you. <laughs> and so I was supposed to end this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, the, the, the celebration ends. I think they might just play a little bit more, and I think we're done, right? All right, all right, we're done. But can we just shout out to God one? On the count of three, can we just say Jesus? Can we do that together? And that's how we'll end this thing and culminate it. Ready? One. Get ready. Two. Three. Jesus! All right, guys, we've just completed the very first National Communion Celebration. We hope it was a tremendous blessing to you. Uh, we want to invite you. This was not just a moment for our nation, but we believe this is a movement, uh, not just in our nation, but in the nations of the earth, that God is calling us back to his table uh, to feast on him and to be strengthened in covenant, uh, to, to become one with him and one another. And so 
Um, we're going to offer continued resources, uh, updated events. Um, there are so many things happening in the body of Christ around the Lord's table. We know that the, the there's a Catholic movement with the Eucharistic revival, and so we're going to put all of that uh, on our website. Come to thetableamerica.co. Um, you can have updated resources on how to just grow and strengthen your faith uh, through communion, on how to continue to meet in your homes. Um, and just cultivate a lifestyle around the Lord's table. We believe that this is something so central uh, to our faith in this hour. And so we just want to pray for you and bless you uh, as you continue in the spirit of today, celebrating the good news of Jesus. Guys, thanks so much for being with us. The good news of Jesus never gets old. And so I just want to bless you to keep that good news in your heart and to fan the flame of that. So I'm just going to pray for you guys. Jesus, thank you so much. For what you have done today, Lord, I thank you, God, that when you're lifted up, Lord, all men are drawn to you, Lord. And so, God, I just ask that you would be lifted up, Lord, continually in our hearts and in our homes and our churches. And I bless these ones, God, that you have marked and touched today, God. I just ask, Lord, that you who began the good work, that you would bring it to completion until the day we see you, God. And so I bless these ones, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the seal of your love, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. 